Hi, I'm Shashank Bhargav and you're listening to Three Things, the Indian Express news show. The state of Punjab goes to the polls on the 20th of February, that is this Sunday. And in the run up to this election, one thing to note is that in the past 1 year, a lot of major developments have happened in Punjab. There have been the farmers protests, the power crisis, and the Congress party, which is the ruling party in the state, has had to deal with a lot of infighting. As many of you would remember, around 4 months back, it was this infighting that eventually led to the resignation of Captain Amrinder Singh, the state's former chief minister. And after this, Congress's Charanjit Singh Channi took his post. Channi in fact is the state's first Dalit chief minister and continues to be the Congress's main chief ministerial face in this election. But besides this political turmoil and change, the state of course has other issues as well, like unemployment, drugs, health, education, all of which are playing on the minds of the Punjab voters. In this episode, we will take a look at all these issues talk about the different political parties that are competing against each other in the state how their strategies are resonating with people and how punjab has historically voted in its elections and for this indian express's monojit majumdar and manraj grewal sharma will be in conversation monojit heads the indian express's explained section and manraj is the resident editor of the chandigarh newsroom So Manraj you have been traveling across Punjab for the last several weeks reporting on the campaign for this very important and in many ways extraordinary assembly election I wanted to ask you today about some aspects of the broader context in which this election is taking place Manraj could you begin by recalling for us briefly the history of elections in Punjab over the last few decades Punjab began its journey in independent India with a slew of coalitions very short lived governments born out of fractured mandates with many spells of president rule right from the beginning uh, there was some agitation or the other so it's only after the end of militancy in the early 1990s that the state enjoyed over two decades of a uh, peace among democratically elected governments with power alternating between akali bjp combined and congress so the present congress government came to power with an overwhelming mandate winning 77 of the 117 seats in 2017 this is the revival of the congress it's just the beginning the congress will revive from here take energy from punjab and spread mark my words so it was the state's first three cornered contest and people had thought this mandate will get fractured or fragmented but that didn't happen congress i think after a long time it won such a whopping majority so if we go back dial back a little you had in the beginning like in most states across the country you had a phase of congress rule and there was a short interlude with the akalis were in power from 1967 onwards and then there was the congress and the akalis alternated and there was a phase of militancy a very phase of great turmoil in punjab presence rule and then after that it has been basically alternating ever since that time and you said that the last time's election was a three cornered election So this one Manraj the one that's happening right now is the first ever genuinely multi-corner election in Punjab. So you have four clear parties which are in the race some are ahead some are not doing all that good. So how does this change the nature of the race itself? I'm asking this especially compared to the traditional straight fight that we have had for the last several years now congress on one side and the bjp and the sd on the other now this multi cornered fight how does it specifically change the nature of the race yeah so you see firstly punjab itself was divided into largely two or three parties as in you had people who were staunch congress voters then you had the akali cadre so akali cadre has always been very strong the panthic cadre the panthic vote and then you had people who were aligned to the communists so we have a region we call malwa 
where a lot of agitations have taken place. So those people were aligned with the communists, so they never really won any seats. So now what has happened is you have five parties in the fray. You have Congress, you have Akali Dal, which is aligned with BSP. Then you have BJP, the erstwhile partner of Akali Dal. BJP is aligned with the Punjab Lok Congress, founded by Captain Amrinder, and a breakaway sad faction called Shirumani Akali Dal Sayukt. It is headed by Rajya Sabha member Mr. Dinsa. Then after that you have AAP. AAP is very strong right now. And then the fifth party is the SSM. It is a farmers party called SSM, and it's born out of this agitation, a Sayukt Samaj Morcha. So right now voters are also in turmoil. As in, there is such a lot to choose from. You know, they are spoiled for choice. Last time also they had AAP, but AAP was just beginning to make inroads in Punjab. So now you have dhara system in villages. They call it dhara system that you either align with this or that, and that particular dhara will sail you through all your troubles, etc. You will go to the that a formation of people together, a group of people together. So that has been diluted now. So right now there are no two dharas in Punjab villages. You have AAP is also making inroads. So right now the election has become fragmented. So instead of two dharas, is that, is that right? That's sides, so choices. That's okay. So instead of two dharas, we have now a multi-cornered election and uh, several unknowns, as you said. I mean, the SAD BJP have split, and then there is the Ahmadbi Party, which appears to be doing much better than what it had done the last time. Captain Amrinder and his alliance with the BJP, and uh, of course the Congress. I mean, this very aggressive infighting in the Congress. So that's the parties, Manraj. Now the biggest issue in Punjab in the weeks and months which have been leading up to this election has been the farmers' agitation. Now I wanted to ask you first for the understanding of you have written also about this in the Express. What is it about farmers and Punjab, and how deep and how broad is the anger on this count? So you see, when these three farm laws were introduced in Punjab, the fear was. That these laws are being brought in for the benefit of corporates. That they will pool in our land, they will take away our MSP, so we will no longer get remunerative prices for our crops, which are mainly wheat and paddy. And our land will be given to corporates, and we will become servants on our own lands. So, which is why there was this huge outrage and huge groundswell of anger. <laughs> And this started from Malwa. This started from areas like Mansa, etc. When the bills were initially tabled in June, and slowly they caught fire. And you know, we had one of the longest agitations of independent India. So the anger is very deep. Even now, the blowback BJP is still feeling that. Because if you go to the ground and you ask people in rural areas how is the BJP candidate doing, people will gather around you and say, "Ek saal ham road pe lete wahan pe, humko itna tang kia. How will we forget that?" And this anger, Manraj, is not just restricted to the Sikhs or to the farming community, right? This anger is fairly broad-based among all communities across the state. Is that right? Yes, because uh, Punjab is largely a rural state, so there is a lot of interdependence amongst communities, and there is no such Hindu-Sikh divide. Because I ended up speaking to a lot of small traders in small villages, and they were very clear that sorry, we cannot vote for X Y Z party because of what they did to the farmers, and we are dependent on them. We have this bonding, you know, we'll do it together. So, but tell me, Manraj, now that the laws themselves have been withdrawn. And in the light of this very complex election field of these many factors, actors, undercurrents that you just described for us a few minutes ago, is the farmers' agitation, given the fact that the laws have been withdrawn now, is it an election issue? What have you seen? You know, it's very strange. I thought it would be a major election issue. It's not. There are other issues like drugs, joblessness, but. Farmers' agitation, per se, it becomes an issue only when you ask them about whether you will vote for a particular party or what are the prospects of, say, a BJP in a rural area. Then it does, but otherwise it's not an issue. And surprisingly, even the farmers' party, which they have floated, SSM, 
they are not getting much traction on the ground and the fear is that a lot of them will be losing their deposit so ideally you would have assumed that here is this entire state which stood by its farmers and if the farmers were to field their candidates they would vote for them that hasn't happened in fact people say when you ask them that will you vote for the ssm these are farmers on the ground not very literate they tell you you know these guys ran such a successful agitation and got the prime minister to repeal the laws this is a victory enough why would they join politics now so would you say that this election now i is primarily being fought on more usual bread and butter issues i mean issues like jobs and prices and health and education would that be the right assessment absolutely absolutely education health jobs these are very big issues and so is the drugs and this is one reason why aap is gaining ground in punjab because what aap is doing is it's telling people about the delhi model of development and they say you know we give very quality education quality healthcare free of cost to our people and here you are you have to pay for everything aaj delhi ke sarkari school shandar ho gaye hain sarkari schoolon ka bura haal hai galat to nahi keh rahe sarkari schoolon ka punjab mein bura haal hai इनको ठीक करना चाहिए नहीं करना चाहिए दिल्ली में हमने बिजली मुफ्त कर दी 200 यूनिट बिजली मुफ्त करी हमने पंजाब में गारंटी दी कि हमारी सरकार आएगी 300 यूनिट तक बिजली मुफ्त करेंगे हर परिवार की दिल्ली में मोहल्ला क्लिनिक बनाए हैं पता है आप लोगों को दिल्ली के मोहल्ला क्लिनिक के बारे में ऐसे पंजाब में हर पिंड में एक एक क्लिनिक बनाएंगे हर मोहल्ले में एक एक क्लिनिक बनाएंगे and so manraj is aap's approach this focus on health and education is that resonating with people as of now what are you seeing absolutely all across punjab when you go to the ground this is one thing that everybody you know people say we are hardcore congresses we were hardcore congresses or we were hardcore akalis but there is nothing much has happened in these two fields of beat education health or even the common civic amenities it's like time and again you hear that 70 years ho gaye 70 years have passed we are still looking at roads and drains that's all that people tell us that this is all your development is limited to this is when they say you know we've heard of arvind kejriwal we've heard of the delhi model and it seems if we could get that here things will certainly improve for us so this is the clamor for change from the traditional parties to someone new who's come up with a model for development so manraj we have spoken about farmer issue and the more bread and butter issues like you know schools or hospitals that you're saying is getting a lot of resonance right now in punjab now the other big issue leading up to the election one that has surfaced repeatedly over the past several years now is this issue of sacrilege i mean if you could sort of just recall what exactly is this issue of sacrilege and in your reporting have you seen that come up in any significant way yeah so this issue this incident of sacrilege it dates back to 2015 so it was in june 2015 when gurudwara in burj jawahar singh wala faridkot district they found the guru granth sahib missing from the gurudwara and then they started looking around because it's a very very unusual thing to happen somebody stealing the guru granth sahib who is considered the living god for the sikhs so then there was a lot of you know the police looked high and low they even emptied the village pond to look for it and then nothing happened for a couple of months this happened in june and then in i think in september posters appeared on the walls of the same shrine saying that if you don't release the movie of dera sacha sauda chief gurmeet ram rahim if you don't honor our guru we will dishonor your guru so something to that effect posters appeared and subsequently in october they found torn pages of guru granth sahib outside the bargadi shrine there's a village called bargadi which is very close to burj jawahar singh wala so that led to a huge outrage among in punjab and there were protests at several places so at one place behbal kala which is also in the same area two protesters were killed in police firing so this snowballed became a huge issue in the 2017 assembly elections because no one was really taken to task or punished for it so there was no clear justice 
I mean, it wasn't seen to be done. Yes, and because it was on this issue also initially, Manraj, that uh, Navjot Singh Sidhu started agitating against Captain Amrinder Singh. And then, of course, it snowballed into this major fight within the Congress, absolutely extraordinary in fighting in the Congress days before the election. So what exactly is Navjot Singh Sidhu's issue? I mean, what is it that he wants and what is it that the Congress is not able to give him? See, Navjot Singh Sidhu, when he joined Congress shortly before the 2017 Assembly elections, there was a feeling that he will be made the Deputy Chief Minister. But that never happened. He was made a minister all right, but not a Deputy Chief Minister. So after a while, what they did was they changed his portfolio. I think he had a local department and then they tried to change it to power. Now, power was a very contentious portfolio because the power tariffs in Punjab were going up. And what Sidhu did is he thought it's a slight to me, like I'm being deprived of the local government. So he quit. Big breaking news coming in. Avjot Singh Sidhu has resigned from Punjab Congress chief post. That is the big breaking story that is coming in. So he quit the government and he had been sulking for a long while. And then in April, High Court quashed the SIT into the Bebel Kala firing, into the sacrilege issue. And it slammed the government for the shoddy investigation into the case. And that is when Sidhu, who was in the hibernation all along, he came out of his hibernation, went to Bargadi, where the sacrilege had taken place, and said very openly that a chief minister who cannot protect his guru, who cannot get justice to his guru, how can he do justice to his people on any other issue? Gurjwar Singh. Gurjwar Sahib, who is the Guru Sahib of the Pavan Suru, Shuri Hus. The Guru Dana Hus Gaya, and since there had been murmurs in Congress against the captain, but there was nobody giving a face to all of this. Sidhu became the engine for this rebellion. The other ministers who were finding themselves hamstrung by captain's style of governance, they said he's not accessible, our works are not done because everything is controlled by the officers. So all of them gathered behind him. Sidhu became the face and since he had a very good relationship with the high command, say Priyanka, Rahul and Sonia Gandhi, he could get there and stick across to them. He also had chief ministerial ambitions and he thought this would result in him becoming the chief minister, which didn't happen. Yes, and uh, unfortunately for Mr. Sidhu, almost out of nowhere, Mr. Channi became the Congress's choice and he became chief minister. And in fact, Manraj, going into this election, I mean, the two major uh, what appears to be a day before the election, what appears to be is that the you've got two chief ministerial faces, Bhagwant Maan and uh, Chalanji Channi, both of whom uh, were not people who you would have thought would be the main two contenders, say, a year back or six months back. So how did that happen? So, you know, these two guys have got a lot of acceptability. You are perfectly right when you say that they were nowhere on the horizon. I mean, nobody knew about Mr. Channi. He was a technical education minister and when Chief Minister Captain Amarinda Singh resigned and what they had done is they had already made Sidhu the PPCC chief. But still there were doubts in people's mind that they would probably choose Sidhu. But what happened is that most of the MLAs said no to Sidhu. So this came about only recently when Mr. Sunil Jakhar, the former PPCC chief, he said that all the MLAs were asked and there was some kind of voting and he got the maximum votes. So Sidhu didn't get as much traction. And then what happened is Mr. Channi became the consensus candidate. And one reason, of course, was that he would be the first Dalit chief minister of the state. Congress committee de Pardhan, Najo Singh Sidhu ji ne, ik aam admi no, ik ik gareeb no, ethe tak le aake bitha rit hai, jithe tak meri ar saadi ho kaat pehla nahi. Similarly, and more recently, they announced him as the CM face after AAP. AAP conducted a phone survey. They gave out a phone number and said that, you know, this is going to be a process most democratic. We are going to let people choose their chief minister face. And then they said they announced at a grand ceremony that Bhagwant Man was the chosen one and they announced his name. So, उन वोट्स को हमने इनवैलिड डिक्लेअर कर दिया जिसने कहा भाई अरविंद केजरीवाल उसको हमने साइड कर दिया उन सारे वोट्स को जो बचे उसमें 93.3% लोगों ने 
सरदार भगवंत मान का नाम लिया सो दिस पुट प्रेशर ऑन कांग्रेस टू ऑल्सो नेम देयर सीएम फेस and congress also said indicated that they had conducted a survey because even now they was hoping against hope mr siddhu thought that he might be announced as the cm face and at one rally with rahul gandhi he said do not make me a darshani ghoda matlab dikhave ke liye nahi you should give me a position of responsibility as well and then rahul gandhi addressed a rally and said our surveys have given us a new chief cm face and it is mr channi पंजाब के लोगों ने कहा हमें गरीब घर का चीफ मिनिस्टर चाहिए पंजाब के चीफ मिनिस्टरियल कैंडिडेट चरणजीत सिंह चन्नी जी सो एज ऑफ नाउ इट सीम्स एवरीबडी इज रैलिंग बिहाइंड बोथ ऑफ देम आई मीन आप इज रैलिंग बिहाइंड मान एंड चन्नी हु हैज लॉट ऑफ एक्सेप्टेबिलिटी अमंग्स द मासिस कांग्रेस इज रैलिंग बिहाइंड हिम there is no sign of so to say rebellion from siddhu a bit of on the election turf in punjab uh, now manraj you know you have mentioned in the course of this conversation you know majha and uh, malwa i mean in political and election analysis punjab is conventionally seen in terms of these three distinct regions malwa majha and dwaba if you could just tell us which geographical areas does each of these regions cover and what are their political characteristics such as the number of seats in the assembly or their voting preferences if there are any all right so you know punjab is broadly divided into three as you said malwa majha and dwaba so they are not just geographically distinct but politically and culturally diverse as well so you know if you were to drive around the state in dwaba they'll call you paji by the time you reach amritsar which falls in majha you will become vire and if you go to bathinda you will be Baiji so they have the distinct punjabi too so uh, malwa is the biggest belt it has 69 assembly seats and 12 districts so it's nestled between satluj and ghagar and it's very close to haryana as well so there are parts of malwa which border both haryana as well as rajasthan for the last few decades at least 3 decades all the cms have come from malwa belt beat captain amrinder singh because Patiala also falls in Malwa. Beat Prakash Singh Badal, his uh, constituency of Lambi falls in Malwa. Before that, Bayan Singh, Rajinder Kaur Bhattal, Harcharan Barad, they are all from this belt. And even this AAP CM face, Bhagwant Man, he is from Sangroor, which is also the Malwa. So the thing about Malwa is that it has two kinds of farmers. One are these very rich farmers, very landed with hundreds of acres, and the other are very small farmers. So there is this rich poor divide, which is one reason why communism took root here. I mean, sympathy towards the communists, and more recently, it was the epicenter of the farm agitation. So BKU Ugrahan, which is the largest farm union of Punjab, it draws its cardo from Malwa. Oh, this is fascinating. Okay, so that is Malwa, the biggest region and politically also the most powerful. So the next one, Majha. What about Majha? so majha as the name implies is is the middle region so in the undivided punjab before partition majha was in the center so it's got 25 assembly seats and it's called the panthik belt because of the profusion of historic gurudwaras including the golden temple the kartarpur corridor also falls in majha but it also has a lot of urban population urban hindu trader population so last time Akalis were almost wiped out from this region because traditionally they've done very well here but last time they could get only two assembly seats and aap could not open its account here and uh, doaba yeah so doaba is considered the most prosperous of the three belts it lies between the river satluj and bias and it has 23 assembly seats so it's the buffer between malwa and majha and it's also the nri belt this is the one belt from where maximum number of people started migrating in the early 20th century i guess and it is also bhagat singh's native village khatkar kala near nawa sher also has a large number of dalit population it has the highest concentration of dalits and the ravidasias they are headquartered in deram balla very close to jalandhar So Manraj you spoke about the Dalit vote now we know that Punjab has the largest proportion of Dalits in its population among all states of India 
and also that Charanjit Singh Channi, the state chief minister, he is the first Dalit chief minister of Punjab. So, how have Dalits in Punjab voted historically? You know, Dalits are not a monolith. Dalits in Punjab are not a homogeneous group. Punjab has really never voted along caste or religious lines. If you look at the past two elections alone, there are 34 reserved seats in Punjab. Last time, Congress won 21. And before that, it was Akalis who won 22. So there is no pattern as such that Dalits will go with Akalis or Dalits will go with Congress. And ever since AAP has come into play, they have been getting a lot of Dalit support. So in their maiden election in 2017, they won 20 seats, of which nine were reserved seats. But Dalits have traditionally never voted as en bloc. So even though Kanchi Ram, the founder of Bahujan Samaj Party, is from uh, Punjab, Husharpur, a village in Husharpur, the party hasn't ever got uh, traction in the state, except for 1996 Lok Sabha polls, when it won three seats. So we have spoken about the election history of Punjab, the issues in this election, the farmers' agitation and the two main candidates for chief ministership going into this election. Punjab votes on February the 20th. Thank you so much, Manraj. Thank you so much, Manujit. You were listening to Three Things by the Indian Express. Today's show was produced by me, Shashank Bhargav, and was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar. If you like the show, then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also recommend the show to someone you think will like it. Share it with a friend or someone in your family. It's the best way for people to get to know about us. You can tweet us at Express Podcasts and write to us at podcast at indianexpress.com. 